Okay. This is the standard vacuum pump that comes with the Harvest Right freeze dryer. We have right at 30 loads on this. A couple of those loads were big loads. We did a couple loads of bananas that were 56 and 54 hours. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart. Our sight glass is dirty. So I know that uh, inside here is gonna be dirty. We've used the regular Robin Air oil. Uh, whenever we bought our vacuum pump, they send you one quarter oil. That, that just does for a little while, it doesn't last long. So we ordered two quarts of the Robin Air oil that Harvest Right sells and thought we'd try it. Um, we do have the Dairyland oil that's gonna go back in this because everything we've read online and, and on all the different groups, the Dairyland oil does so much better. But I wanted to try the Robin Air oil and see um, how well it did and I did, notice after, I did notice after about four or five runs, our sight glass started getting dirty, especially after we did a run of bananas and after we did a run of fresh strawberries. And it seems like every time we ran fresh fruit is when the oil would get even more dirty than any other thing. Like if we did eggs or onions, something like that, the oil never did get very dirty. It'd get a little bit of moisture in it. When I drain the oil, I could see the moisture in there. Of course, we just let it settle and then pour it off. We do use the Brita filter. So, so we filter our oil with the Brita filter and the toilet paper. And if you don't know how to do that, just Google it. There's plenty of videos and different um, sites that explain how to make that. And that's definitely the way to go. The piece of junk oil filter that they send um, with your machine, just throw it in the garbage. They've built a wonderful product in their freeze dryer, but yet they skimped on the oil filter. I just don't understand that. Maybe Harvest Right will, uh, maybe they'll correct that sometime in the future. But we're going to take this pump apart today and look at it, go ahead and clean the sight glass, clean the inside of it, and then switch over to the Dairyland oil and run 30 loads on it. And then I'll make another video and we'll see how, how it compares. So we'll see which oil does the best. This is the Robin Air oil that if you order from Harvest Right, this is the oil that they'll send you. It's premium, high vacuum pump oil, which it looks like a good quality oil, but by the looks of the sight glass on this, I'm not too sure about it. Like I said, a lot of the forums and everything, they're, they're using the Dairyland oil, so I do have a gallon of the Dairyland oil, so I'm gonna run it for 30 cycles and see how it does, and then pull it back apart, and we'll look at it, and we'll compare the two. So I'll get an Allen wrench here or a hex key wrench. And this is just a four millimeter T handle Allen wrench. I'm sure if you have an impact, uh, you could use a bit like this, a regular hex key bit and get all the way back there to it. But I don't want to strip these screws out. This is an aluminum housing. So I figured I'd just use the T handle to do it. Now, if you're using bigger T-handles, it's always a good idea to put a shop rag on them. That way, when the bolts break loose, it doesn't vibrate your hand. These are small bolts, so I'm not too worried about it. sure there's a gasket on the back side of this. I tried to find a video online on how to do this with this particular pump and I couldn't find one. So, but all the other vacuum pumps I've ever worked on over the years, there'll always be a rubber seal here. So we'll want to watch that and be careful we don't bend that up or kink it. So that way when we put it back together, we don't leak oil. Okay, we have, our bolts off. we have our bolts off. I can see some oil leaking out. Pull this off. Look at it. Yeah, there's just all kinds of gunk in here. Oh, it looks terrible. Look how bad that looks. Rusty. That is just downright terrible. I can't believe 
how bad this pump looks. And change the oil every other run. So every third run sometimes, depending on how long the run is. But that just looks terrible. I'll let you look inside here. I'm gonna have to get something to dump this gunk, but I don't know if you can see that on camera, but look at all the junk inside this. Look at that. That is just, it should not look like that. It should be this aluminum housing is. This whole piece right here should be that clean. Uh, it shouldn't have all this rust and all this junk on it. So I'm going to have to clean all this up and uh, clean the inside and take the sight glass off and go ahead and clean that also. Build a water separator for it. Maybe drill and tap this aluminum housing and put me a fitting in with a quick connect going to a, a water separator and then going through a pump and just circulating the oil and through a pump and a filter. Um, so that way while the vacuum pump is running, I can turn it on and it'll constantly be pulling the water out of it. So maybe we won't get this rust on here and it'll constantly be filtering the oil also. So let me go get something to pour this in and we'll get to cleaning. This is the junk I got out of the vacuum pump cover. It's just nasty, just terrible looking. I've cleaned this up as best I can. You can see I used a pig mat and a couple rags here. Um, I was gonna try a wire brush on it, but I'm, I'm afraid I'll, I'll contaminate it. I did use a toothbrush and took some regular vacuum pump oil and put on the toothbrush and helped clean a lot of that off. I was able to get uh, most of the loose junk off of it. There's still some on here. I don't know, you could probably take carburetor cleaner or something like that, but if you did that, then you'd really want to clean it good because that's going to affect your oil or you might fill it up with oil and then drain it when you're done. I couldn't get the sight glass. I did get the inside of the housing good and clean. You can see the deflector plate. It's a little stainless steel plate up there. It's good and clean. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Like I said, I've got it as clean as, pretty much as clean as I can get it. Um, there's still just a little gunk. I've just scrubbed and scrubbed on this with rags, um, with the pig matting, and with the toothbrush, and got it as clean as I could get it. I still don't like it. I wish it was all at least this clean, as you can see the front of that is. Um, but look, you can still see. I'm, I'm going to have to do some more cleaning on this. Um, so let me get back to cleaning, and uh, then I'll turn the camera back on and show you where I'm at. I spent about 30 minutes cleaning on this. Uh, I think that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it without using some kind of chemical on it, whether you use carburetor cleaner or something like that, some acetone maybe to, to clean it up. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and put the Dairyland oil in it, and maybe change it um, after every run for a while and see if I can get it to clean up. On Harvest Rights website, it says that uh, you can change it every three to four runs. And I've been doing it every two to three runs, and it still looks this bad. So if you've done something different out there, please leave it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.